Biobalance HealthCast, Episode 163, How Environmental Toxins Affect the Human Body. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Kathy and her staff just recently got back from a national training conference at the AMMG mm -hmm. uh, in Las Vegas, which is the Age Man Management Medicine Group. And one of the presentations that she listened to is really the, the stimulus or the trigger for the conversation that we're going to have today. It was a conversation about uh, oxygenation of the cells, which just really sounds lively to, to me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And, and the accumulation of toxins in our environment and toxins in our body. Uh, an example of a toxin that accumulates is heavy metals. And, and we'll, we'll talk about that and Mercury, what those terms aluminum, mean yeah. and, and how that all works. But basically, your body ingests, as part of living, certain poisons that it has to sweep out of the system the, and the way the cell system works. And it has to do with how well you do that ha, uh, impacts your aging how quickly and, uh, you age, uh, it impacts your immune system, uh, and it is impacted by certain things like the food you eat, uh, the air you breathe, the water you drink. Uh, it's our environment. Yeah. And, and I was never a tree hugger really till I, I listened to this. Okay. And now I am. Now you are. Well, I mean, I was, kind of, but not as, so, as passionately as I am now. So be... Before we get into the specifics of the discussion, we also want to give credit to the man who provided the scientific research and did the workshop at the AMMG uh, conference, and that was Dr. Derek De Silva of New Jersey. De Silva. Uh, De Silva. So you can find him online. And he is a reputable uh, physician who has his own practice, who teaches, uh, who does a lot of the kinds of things that you do. Mm -hmm. And he is presenting at this conference because he has done this research and accumulated the data, which I find some of this data to be really interesting, mm -hmm. even though the topic itself doesn't draw me as an interesting topic. Right. But when you right. get into it, it actually is. Because it makes you think of things yeah. that you just don't know. No one, they're, all of the toxins and heavy metals are invisible. Yeah. It's like how we used to think of bacteria. And it, was, it wasn't there because we couldn't see it, viruses, yeah. it wasn't there because we couldn't see it. Toxins. It is there, and well, it's in our environment, and it's, and it's exponentially accumulating in our environment as we live in a modern age. One of the facts that the doctor presented was that 70%, 7 out of 10 Americans, are regularly on a minimum of one prescription drug. Mm -hmm. It's just stunning to me. You just don't think about that. I, I don't. Uh, I mean, no, but 20% are on five or more. Five or more. So 20%. Prescription drugs. This not, is not, not over-the-counter things or supplements. These are prescription mm -hmm. medicines sanctioned by the FDA and all of, all of that. Uh, that just seems to be an awful lot of medicine. Well, it's a lot more medicine than it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago because we are getting sicker as a population. That's is, is his Is it that or is it because message. drug companies advertise on television? They have these nice, wonderful little ads and say, go get, and they don't tell you what it's for. They don't tell you why you need to take it. But, but then the lawyers come in at the end, and they say, some people who take this die. Some people have heart attacks. Some people bleed. Some people, you know, and, and so if you have yeah. this, 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 mm -hmm. don't take it. But they've already sold it to you with the nice, fuzzy, warm, you know, football. I was, I was alive this. during the time it went from it was unethical to, yeah. to actually be on television and advertise as you a physician. That old. Yeah. Physician wow. or a pharmaceutical company right. or anything. Couldn't but advertise. All, but... Lawyers did it first, mm -hmm. and then, of course, we said, oh, we can do what the lawyers do. Right. And that has increased cost mm -hmm. and increased number of medications. But why do we need these medications? Why do we have these symptoms that may not have been around yeah. for our grandparents? And he's bringing this down to two major things. Okay. We don't have the same nutrition in, in our food. Like an apple mm -hmm. has 70% less nutrition than it did 40 years ago. So why? Because of toxins in the environment? Because of toxins in the environment and because we're not taking care of our of the land. We're not, we're not re... Rotating the we, crops, that sort of thing? You know, it's biblical to rotate crops. And we've always 
in the past done it, yeah. but we're taking all the minerals and all the nutrients out of our crops by not rotating. Mm -hmm. And even if we do rotate, they're gone. We're using them up. We don't let them lie fallow, you know? So right. we make apples, but they don't taste like they did when I was a kid, you know, or, or we grow. So an apple a day no longer keeps no, the doctor away? No, and I don't think it does. Yeah. And that was actually one of his statements. Oh, funny. I didn't, I didn't tell that. you that. Yeah. So um, it no longer does that. but. The, most, the common drugs mm -hmm. he was talking about, because he considers drugs sometimes toxic because they use up your nutrients and they make you imbalanced in your nutrients. And he, that's what we'll talk about at the end after we go through the toxins uh, in our environment. But, uh, but as for drugs, uh, 20 to 59-year-olds, the most common drugs are antidepressants. So if you are 20 to, to 59, 59, at some point you're probably going to get prescribed an antidepressant. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. I didn't know that we were all that, that depressed, but I think it's they're prescribed for other things. They're prescribed off-label. They're prescribed right. for pain. They're prescribed for other things that we haven't always used them for. Right. But they're prescribed for menopause. They're prescribed for really a testosterone deficiency. Here, take this. You're depressed. I find menopause to be depressing. Well, it is if you don't treat it. Yeah. Especially if you're the husband. Yes. Um, <laughs> The um, greater than 60-year-olds, the most, the most common drug is cholesterol-lowering drug. And I'd almost be willing to say that's greater than 40-year-olds because everybody's put on it early. Cholesterol. Now, now it's yeah. changed. Yeah. Well, we and know then, that if you're over 60, they're not putting you on armor thyroid. We know that. We do. No, because yeah. anyway, in any case, these are the drugs that are most commonly used. Mm -hmm. And we will see that you need to take different nutrients to help balance what they leach from your body. Mm -hmm. But we're not as well as we used to be. First of all, we don't work out as much. We don't walk as much. We don't, we don't do manual labor as much. We're sitting in a chair. Mm -hmm. But we also produce all kinds of byproducts to the things that we need. Byproducts to plastics, byproducts to leather, which, you know, that are heavy metals or they are contaminating our environment. They're all getting in our system. And one of the things he brought up that I loved was that every human being in America has more than a thousand toxins in their body, contained in their body you right now. You said it, I, I'm older than you are, and I remember Rachel Carson's book, The Silent Spring, yes. about pesticide yes. use. And all of those things that accumulate in the soil, accumulate in our food, uh, the poisons and heavy metals, toxins from pollution uh, that accumulates in the food chain. I'm not going to use the, Roundup anymore. Yeah. I mean, I used to use it yeah. on, on the lawn. To I'm not yeah, doing to make that. your lawn look nice and your poison. It's not worth what? it. Roundup yeah. is is stays in the environment. Mm -hmm. Pesticides and herbicides. Plastics. And plastics. All yeah. of those things are contaminating us and making us ill. And the way he talked about it was, he said, actually, he was talking about aging, too. So he said, because of all of these toxins, we age earlier. So like hormone um, loss, I'm seeing more 40-year-old men mm -hmm. instead of 60-year-old men. So men have, have seemed to decrease the age at which they need testosterone replacement. And they don't make it themselves. And if you think about it, as an anthropologist... That would make sense because if we have toxins in our environment, we become less fertile. Mm -hmm. Like in Pompeii, right. they had lead pipes. They right. didn't know lead caused brain damage and infertility. They had lead pipes. It's a toxin. It's a heavy metal. And they were all infertile. Yeah. They had well, no or children. Or you know the Mad Hatter. Right. The Hatters made pressed felt hats using fulminated mercury. Right. And over time, the expert hat makers literally had the fulminated mercury operate as an acid on their brain and dissolve their brain cells, and they all became mad, meaning insane. Right. Yeah, they did. You know, uh, so so these, these are things we've had in our history we know about. Right. But now, because the companies that make all these things and have to get rid of them somehow, right. they, they, they kind of subliminate it all. And we want what we want. We want that. We want our lawn to look good. We want well, we that want dress. We want that yeah. leather coat. But in making leather, you use arsenic. Mm -hmm. And so we've never figured out a different way to tan leather. So well, what did we do? We shipped it to China. Even playground equipment. Uh, until very recently in a, in a number of states, playground equipment was treated, the wood was treated with arsenic 
to keep the bugs from eating the playground equipment up uh, mm -hmm. so they have to be replaced. And that arsenic stays in the system and, and it's toxic. I mean, this doctor says there are four <coughs> causes of aging beyond just getting older. Right. And so if you're trying to uh, avoid the deterioration process of aging and, and stay younger, uh, and more vibrant, more healthy, and live longer, mm -hmm. then you need to consider these things. And the first one he mentions is the decline of hormones, mm -hmm. which is your specialty. Mm -hmm. That's what you've worked on. Second mm -hmm. is what he calls oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. And that goes to the oxygenation in the cell process and the toxin. Well, we need oxygen. Mm -hmm. We need oxygen, and oxygen is good for us, but it also breaks down to free radicals mm -hmm. who da that damage our cells. So it's a, it's a bittersweet thing. We okay. need lots of oxygen to stay alive, right. but when it breaks down, and it will break down with these toxins more readily. Which into is the next thing, toxin overload. Toxin overload. And, and then and finally, lack of nutrients. And mm -hmm. all of these are sort of interwoven into this rope that's choking us. Right. And it's very hard to attack something you can't see. Right. And it's very hard to t attack something that's ubiqu ubiquitous in our society. Even we've changed tanning leather, we've moved it to China, but it's still in our oceans. It's still right. in our fish. Right. It's still, I mean, it's a world community. It doesn't, because we changed to another com country, doesn't mean we aren't getting arsenic. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, it's a global issue, probably much more important than global warming. We can't well, do much about global like warming. Like the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico at the, uh, that's underneath where the Mississippi River empties into the Gulf yeah. of Mexico. That is a result of all of the toxins that are used uh, to promote farming mm -hmm. in the Midwest that drain out of the fields into the Mississippi mm -hmm. and down to the Gulf of Mexico. And there's like a 150, 175 mile circle uh, in the Gulf of Mexico where nothing lives because all those poisons are in there. You would think that there would be a way to counter that. You would and think. Like magnets, you know, some like a chemicals. magnet to know oh. some, something, I mean, like charcoal absorbs a lot of crud. Then what do you do with your charcoal? <laughs> you know, charcoal's in a lot of filters for water. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's a, an actual natural product that absorbs toxins and absorbs... Nature has a way to take care right. of it and rebalance it, just, just like the BP oil spill. But one of the problems is we keep overloading what nature can do by adding more and more and more right. in volume. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Yeah. And, and, our, and I'm, I'm a bad, I'm a consumer, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the problem. Well, let's talk about some of these toxins. Heavy metals is one of the things that mm -hmm. were mentioned. And heavy metal is more than just a music uh, <laughs> style. And if your body doesn't process heavy metals out, over your lifetime, you do ingest heavy metals, you do encounter heavy metals, and they stay in your system. They don't come out. There's no way for if them you to reach metabolize. a critical mass of of heavy metals, it'll kill you. So eventually, it's one of the ways that you may die is a heavy metal overload. There are treatments that you can use to reduce heavy metal, uh, but those also have risks. One is chelation. Chelation. Uh, it's a you have to go to a special, specific doctor who knows what they're doing with chelation. Mm -hmm. They give you um, medication uh, that actually attach to the heavy metals in your system. Mm -hmm. And then they... <laughs> like sweeping a little magnet through your system that's and just right. collecting it. And all the, they have specific chemicals th that they give you, right. which catch to the heavy metals, and then they come out your kidneys right. or your liver into your intestines. Right. But even that process is, is dangerous. Because to your kidneys, to your and, your kidneys and, liver. and your liver. Right. So you have to have somebody who really knows what they're doing. And this would not be something you would do because, oh, I don't feel good. It's something if you have cancer, if you have some debilitating illness. Right. That well, you're you, probably going to die anyway. Right. Unless they can reverse it in some right. way. I mean, it's used as an extremist intervention. Yes, it is. You're right. Yeah. So we don't want to make you think, oh, let's go out and get chelated. <laughs> no. That's not what I'm talking about. And it's something that a medical doctor should do, mm -hmm. meaning MDDO. So that's something they have to have a lot of training for to do it safely. Mm -hmm. But what, the way we test for it, heavy metals aren't always in your blood. There's heavy metals that stay in your, in your fat. There are heavy metals that are in your hair and your bones. So oftentimes, if we just test for heavy metal in by taking a blood test, right. we're not going to find it. Right. 
Okay. But if you do a hair sample, and we do periodically, we do hair samples. We don't see that every day. Right. But we'll do hair samples on people, and then find the heavy metals. I did it on myself, and of course, I drink out of aluminum cans, or did. Uh huh. And I had several pots in my kitchen that are aluminum. So now they're gone because I'm not going to cook in aluminum, right. but I had a high aluminum level. Yeah. So then there are other ways to get this out of your system. You have to use specific nutrients that are specific to those heavy metals. Well, for years, one of the common ingredients in deodorant was aluminum hexchloride. Right. That's right. So you put that under your arms every day. And you absorb it through, through your sweat glands. I mean, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't ever use that. That was something my mother said was dangerous. My mother was an herbalist, naturalist. Mm -hmm. We use those ro white rocks mm -hmm. that are like natural something they take away. I remember the odor. a few years back there was a really hot issue sweeping among all of the dentists that I knew about replacing people's fillings because of toxicity buildup, heavy mm -hmm. metal buildup uh, from the fillings they put in your mouth. And so they mm -hmm. wanted to take the, if you had fillings that were 15 or 20 years old, you want to take them all out and replace them. It's amalgam, but is it mercury? Or I, is it? I think it was mercury, but I, I, but I, I don't know that. I just I don't know, know that it was either. a heavy metal issue that they thought was poisoning people that had had these fillings that were made of this ingredient, had had them in their system for so long. Right. And their recommendation was, come in and let me replace all your fillings with this new thing that mm -hmm. doesn't have that ingredient in it. That doesn't have any heavy metals in mm -hmm. it. And they made sure it was safe. Yeah. So. The thing, and, and then the next question is, we've talked about pesticides, we've talked about herbicides, we've talked about heavy metals. Heavy metals include um, cadmium, which I, I have, or I had before I used the nutritional um, cleansing, but cadmium was, is part of my, I used to paint and mm -hmm. do pastels on, on, before I was called, I was kind of artistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would always use pastels, you'd use your fingers and you'd spread the pastels, and cadmium was in the yellow paint, right. and it was in the yellow oil pastels. And yeah. so that, I absorbed cadmium from that. Right. And that can damage your, you neurologically. And that's, and, but I've, I've gone through the, I mean, just by painting. When I was in grade school, I remember we used to have science experiments where they would take mercury and give us little bubbles yeah, of mercury. Yeah, we played with mercury. Play with in our hands. And they and let feel us run it. across the and floor. And if you and put it on a quarter, no matter how old and abused the quarter was, the quarter would be shiny and uh -huh. new looking. And we were just all agog at you know what this mercury could do. We played with it in our hands, ad nauseum. Well, if you grow your uh, now hair they a little don't, longer, now they don't I'll do, do that. a hair sample on you. <laughs> now they don't do that. Yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah. And you, even they've taken it out of thermometers. Thermometers. Yeah. So, uh, not that a thermometer is dangerous, but if you break it, you don't want it broken and you don't want exactly. to ingest it. Exactly. So, the things that come from heavy metals, insecticides, plastics, all the things in our environment are memory loss, mm -hmm. joint pain, um, nerve damage, energy deficiency, I'm so tired, you know, uh, age-related diseases and cancers, and age-related is like creaking joints, I'm so, I hurt all over. Right. Some people consider maybe fibromyalgia has something to do with heavy metals. Wow. And immune system, your immune system is your- Do the heavy your, metals accumulate like in your joints or is it just spread throughout your body? Spreads like it, throughout your body. But okay. the part that's in your fat, that's one of the things that's a problem when you have fat gain, fat loss, fat gain, fat loss. Every time you lose fat, you're circulating heavy metals, whatever, and, and the the, Okay, I'm going to say this wrong because I always do PBCs, the plastics that mm -hmm. were like estrogens, they mm -hmm. collect in the fat too. So it's just going out throughout your body making you feel sick. So oftentimes people will lose weight and they feel sick when they lose weight. So oh, I'm going to regain it. That doesn't help. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is being excreted throughout your body, but then you'll grab it right back up in the So fat. your blood circulates through your system and it collects all the garbage from each cell. Yeah. And then it takes it to the garbage dumps of, of the intestines and the liver and the kidneys, which and then your process fat, it out. And or your it brain leaves it is in your partially fat. fat. Your brain is mostly fat. Yeah. yeah. So I mean cholesterol. Yeah. Your brain's cholesterol. And so there's a there's a lot of that in there and lipids. So it it puts it in your bones and your hair and your brain and your skin. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these things are dumping grounds or right. storage areas right. for all of the toxins. But fats usually get the PBCs, the 
the, uh, pla that's why we don't use certain plastic bottles anymore. Uh, we finally figured it out years, years, years later after we've been doing this and putting baby plastic baby bottles in our children's mouths. And yeah. So um, we've now figured oh, glass I remember is when better. My oldest son, who's in his 40s now, was little. We were excited. Uh, Playtex, I think, came out with these plastic bags that you would oh, insert yeah. in a baby bottle yeah. and fill full of formula or milk, and then you just dispose of them mm -hmm. instead of having to boil Why? them and sterilize them and all of that. Uh, it was just so much faster and easier mm -hmm. for a mobile society. And his mother and I were both working and we were running around all the time. And man, we were really grateful to have this really handy disposable processing system to feed this child. I know. I know. You could have just put it in the dishwasher and it would have been sterile. Yeah. <laughs> that well, was another. That long ago, we didn't have those dishwashers either. Oh, that's true. That, that was back in the That's back dark in the dark ages. ages. I forgot. Yeah. So what happens with this we we've also discussed nutrient deficiency so we'll that's one of the things believe this or not this is a fact and he had backup for it and if I'll put the um, the link to his website but okay. Dr. De Silva but 60 minerals are needed for normal life so we we need to eat and maintain 60 different minerals in our body but only eight are find in high found in high concentrations in our daily diet. So eight. most of us eat mostly manufactured food products. Right. The high manufacturing process system has evolved to the point where most of the nutrients that are organically in the food are not in there anymore. And even when you grow them, when mm -hmm. someone is growing them on a farm, mm -hmm. there is 76% decline in trace minerals in our food over the last 40 years. Which goes back to the whole crop rotation and pesticide right. and, and yeah. yeah, and genetic air engineering. Mm -hmm. um, so 74 percent of healthy adults don't consume enough iodine. That's mm -hmm. one of the things that I kind of have a thing about because iodine is necessary for the breast and for the thyroid. Right. And so iodine has been in, we used to supplement it in salt and now we don't supplement it at all because most people don't eat salt. We've said salt's bad, which I don't believe salt is really, you have to have salt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can't cut it out of your diet. But, but we need about 10 times what the, F, the FDA says we need. So I supplement most of my patients with iodine. We don't have it here in the Midwest. If you so eat, do they still market iodine salt? I mean, iodine-based salt? Yeah, Morton Salt still has iodine option. Uh -huh. But most people don't eat that. Right, because we've all been told not to eat salt. Right. Yeah. Or they eat sea salt, and that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have as much. Right. So for iodine, you can eat kelp, kelp, and it, or you can eat food that's been grown in areas where there used to be an ocean long ago, but that may have been leached out as well. Yeah. So that's, that's not necessarily um, one of the things that I would suggest mm -hmm. because you don't know if there's iodine in that food or not. So I would suggest just replacing your iodine if you don't need it it'll 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 be released through your kidneys out out of your body so one of the things then that is uh, a conclusion of this sort of conversation is that the nutrients that we need to consume are no longer in the soil and no longer in the food in enough volume we have to eat the food that we have but it's not feeding us what we need so there is now a huge supplement, supplicant, supplement, supplement, thank you, market mm -hmm. to replace or provide those missing nutrients. Mm -hmm. And so health food stores, at least in America, uh, are legion. I mean, you go to any mall and there's going to be a health food store mm -hmm. where you can go in and get supplements for your diet. But you have mm -hmm. to figure out the nutritional imbalance. You have to go in and figure out either by consulting with their salespeople mm -hmm. or by reading or, or you know, labels or whatever, what do I need? What, what vitamins and nutrients and things do I need to offset what's not in my food? There's a new test for that and we're looking into that to see if you can have a test that says all of these nutrients, if I did your test, it would, it would give me, if you're, if you're adequate, if, right. you're, if you're low, you know, or if you're well, well fed in that area. Yeah. So we have a way of testing that. I just have to talk to the, the testing company. I haven't done that yet, so but there is a way. So you could give me a printout to say, go to GNC and get this and this and this. Mm -hmm. You could go any, yeah, or, any, or anywhere. I mean, GNC is just yeah. a, a brand I know. Or go online locally. or 
whatever, yeah. and get these nutrients to make up for what you don't have. We do a little of that in our, our dietary genetics because mm -hmm. you genetically are low on certain things. Mm -hmm. You have a propensity to be low because you use up certain vitamins. So we have already figured that out. Uh -huh. We've done our genetics and we know what we need to take just to be normal because of our genetics, but that has nothing to do with toxins. So, so th there's still one other topic. It's a pretty extensive topic that we were going to discuss. It has to do with polypharmacy mm -hmm. and aging mm -hmm. uh, and its impact uh, on us. I think we'll hold that back for another mm -hmm. conversation. I think so. It's very important. What it means is if you take a certain drug, it uses up a certain enzyme or a certain nutrient, so you need to balance that. And so that's very important. So we would like to dedicate our next uh, health cast to that. So thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.